Institute will revolutionize the world before the close of the century who will bring together all mankind in one all-embracing space. Mankind will begin to feel the great force of this man in the early 1980s, and during the subsequent 10 years, the world as we know it will be reshaped into one without wars and suffering. His power will grow greatly until 1999, and this year is extremely significant, as will also be discussed, at which time the peoples of this earth will probably discover the full meaning of the vision, unquote. Well, according to this vision, a child born on February the 5th, 1962, will grow up to bring a one-world religion onto the face of the earth, and his efforts will be successful in 1999. The New York Times newspaper folks ran three consecutive articles on the conjunction of five planets, the sun, the moon, and an invisible body that astrologers call Ketu, starting on February the 4th, 1962. The first article stated that the various bodies moved into rough alignment in the constellation Capricorn at 7.05 a.m., New York Times. The Capricorn, remember, is the goat. In history, the goat was the goat of Mindiv, or the ram. And the newspaper article also says that they would remain in that alignment until 7.17 a.m., New York Times, Monday. The goat of Mindiv, the ram, is also another word or another name for Lucifer, Satan. However, the article went on to say that most of the people in India became alarmed because most astrologers were making predictions of disasters. There were a few astrologers who were predicting good for the world as a result of this alignment, but few Indians appeared to be paying them much heed. Now, couple that with Gene Dixon's prediction that the child was born on February the 5th, 1962, midpoint in this alignment, and what do you get? <laughs> They're going to great pains to prepare the world for something. Astronomers did not consider the event to be rare, however, and the article went on to report that the same configuration had occurred several times in the past, the last time being in April 1821, and then it occurred twice. The article reported that Dr. Kenneth L. Franklin of the Museum of Natural History, Hayden Planetarium in New York, had commented that, that that year does not seem to be a year of any remembered disasters. He was then quoted as saying, and that year isn't famous for anything, as far as I know. <laughs> Dr. Franklin also commented on the body the astrologers call Kitu. He speculated that it may be some sort of astrological addition used to make everything come out right. He then added that he believed K2 to be the invisible planet that is frequently taken into account in astrological reckonings, but that he had no idea how it was possible to keep track of something that no one could see, and as far as he knows, didn't even exist. The Times carried another article the next day, Monday, February the 5th, 1962, the date that the supposed child was born, and it repeated the concern of the Hindu astrologers. In fact, that headline read, Hindu astrologers still say it's doomsday. And the subheadline read, Peaceful beginning of planetary event is viewed gravely. Now, the third article in the series ran on Tuesday, February 6, 1962, and carried the headline, quote, Doomsday in India, uneventful, unquote. <laughs> The article reported that the Indian astrologers had predicted a variety of disasters, earthquakes, tidal waves, devastating fires, and warfare, to name but a few, but that none of these events had occurred. Furthermore, the article reported that Hindu priests had claimed that the reason nothing had happened was because their prayers to their god had been answered. But folks, none of these three articles mentioned the birth of anyone on these three days. Furthermore, none but a few astrologers had believed that something good was going to happen, and that only a few in India had even listened to them. Only Gene Dixon, another astrologer, had seen a vision of something beneficial, in this case the birth of a baby full of wisdom at about the midpoint of the three-day affair. One can only wonder if once again she missed the mark and was involved in another error, or if she was intentionally made to set up the world to welcome someone named Lord Maitreya. 
In any event, these people claim that the Lord, Maitreya, will appear shortly to the entire world and start everyone off on a road to a one-world religion. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, in her book entitled The Secret Doctrine, called him, quote, the dragon of wisdom, unquote. So it appears that the one call that Jean Dixon made that appears to match other comments is her statement that the baby she saw in her vision was full of wisdom. If the baby she claimed to have seen in her vision was Lord Maitreya, then she was right because others have claimed that Lord Maitreya is full of wisdom. However, there is still reason to believe that she was given inside information by some New Agers who wanted to have this Lord's birth prophesied so that when he did surface, the New Agers could claim that his birth had been a fulfilled prophecy. So the world awaits the visible appearance of Lord Maitreya. Ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners, so that you would realize that I'm not making any of this up, I took last night's program and tonight's program verbatim from the introduction all the way through Chapter 3 of a book entitled The New World Order by my good friend A. Ralph Epperson. Again, the title of the book is The New World Order by A. Ralph Epperson, and you can order that book in any good bookstore. If you can't find it in your area, Contact us, and we will make arrangements with Mr. Epperson to be able to furnish that book to you if you would like to purchase it. I also recommend that you purchase my book, Behold a Pale Horse. It's a handbook for what's going to happen in the coming years, especially in this country. And without it, you will be crippled. If you would like to purchase my book, Behold a Pale Horse, if you're a CADG member, send $25. That includes postage and handling. If you're not a CADU member, send $30. That includes postage and handling. Also ask for a packet of information on how to join CADU and all of the other things that we have available for you. Send it to Stan at Post Office Box 889, Camp Verde, Arizona, 86322. That's PO Box 889, Camp Verde, Arizona, 86. Folks, we are nearing the end of the road of civilization as we know it unless we wake up, unless we take control and make sure the future is what we want it to be. And one of the things that we must do now immediately is stop fighting amongst each other. Stop fighting the man who doesn't look like you or the woman who doesn't look like you the people who have a different skin color than you do. We must learn to live together, and it's nobody else's business what somebody else's religion is. It doesn't hurt us if they want to practice their religion as long as they are not hurting us in the process. So why go to war with them? We are all brothers and sisters in this world, no matter who we are. Let's learn to live together and love each other. Good night. And God bless each and every one of you.